The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, South Sonomish County, Washington, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35041. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting on the bumper face of the vehicle, passenger side, you'll find dual air horns. Just inside of that location, you'll find two tow hooks protruding through the front bumper. Moving just inside of that location, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Moving all the way to the driver's side, you'll find your mechanical siren on the bumper face. Moving up onto the bumper extension, you'll find a tubbed covered storage location for your front bumper hose load. Moving just to the right in the image toward the driver's side, you'll find a swivel discharge. Let's move up onto the cab face. On the outer edge, you'll find a marker and turn indicator. Within that same bezel, you'll find the headlight structure housing a low and high beam headlight. The high beam will be located on the inside. Moving upward, we'll find emergency warning lights forward facing. And then we'll move all the way up to the windshield where you have three windshield wipers across the seamless one piece windshield. As we move to the outer edges of the vehicle, you'll find your mirrors housing a flat mirror and convex mirror. Moving up to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five clearance lights. Located directly in the center, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. As we move up onto the roof of the vehicle, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located inside the light bar in the center is your Opticom device. And then moving slightly above the light bar, you'll find your go light controlled from within inside the cab of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups of the items that we just talked about. First, starting with a side view where we'll pick up on the bumper extension, a side-facing emergency warning light. Here are some images of the front bumper extension. You can see the compartment that holds the front hose is open. And then also, just moving to the right in the image, swivel discharge, foam capable. Let's go ahead and take a look at the entire side of the vehicle from the driver's perspective. We'll focus in now on the front section of the cab, starting first down at the lower section. Your center axle has a sight gauge located inside, Alcoa wheels, and also Goodyear tires. We do have the front bumper extension side facing emergency warning light. In the step well of the driver's area, you'll find a positive and negative battery connection point. You'll also find easily accessible with a gloved hand, your door latches, which are keyed. There are also grab handles at each point of entry for firefighters to gain access in and out of the cab. You'll also find an auto eject plug for shoreline power. It is a 20 amp. And right next to it, a side facing emergency warning light. Let's move now to the A pillar. Difficult to see in this image, although there is a side facing camera, which will display inside the driver's space. As we move up to the very top of the notch area, you'll find a side facing cab scene light and then toward the rear wall of the apparatus, D handle gains access into this long compartment. Close ups of the items we talked about, Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheels and a sight gauge. Moving to the auto eject plug. Let's go ahead and move into the driver's space of the cab, first starting with the door panel on the driver's side. Affixed to the door panel is all of our safety and warning information. You'll also find electric window controls, door latch, and lock. As we move to the step well, you'll find a positive and negative battery connection point. You'll also find about the right ankle of the operator, this yellow placard manufactured for your department. The date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, the VIN number, the components for each fluid component and fluid type. Let's move now just inside at the floorboard general area here. Let's first start down at the very bottom at the floorboard. This is a mechanical siren foot pedal to engage your mechanical siren. Moving up at about the left knee of the operator, master battery switch, tech module, engine transmission, ABS diagnostic port, and then also our switches and indicators for ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, 
and region inhibit, and then also a display port. As we move upward from this location, a switch panel housing the load manager. Moving up to the dash area, we'll start at the left. This is your ignition and start switch. Moving just inside of that location, you'll find a switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master. It will engage and disengage all emergency lights. Headlight switch, and then a switch labeled Panel, which allows you to brighten or dim lights within preview of the operator. Let's go ahead and move to the opposite side of the steering column where you'll find the OK to engage the high idle indicator and indicator switch. Moving up on to the dash area, you'll find your transmission oil DEF level and water temp on the left side. Moving to the right, front and rear air, volts and fuel level. Located in the center, your tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic engine information will display above the speedometer and also below the speedometer. Let's move just to the right and downward. You can partially see your pump shift. I don't have a very good picture of this, but this is your pump shift. There are instructions for moving from road to pump and then also from pump to road. The yellow column must be pulled and the shift mechanism moved downward. For pump operations, you need two green indicators. Let's do a general view here. We'll start at the very top section first with your Pierce command zone. Tremendous amount of information on this display. Please see your owner's manual for all functions. To the right, you have a radio push to talk button. Just beneath that, your windshield wiper control, push for fluid. As we move downward, you'll find your switches. You have an engine brake on and off switch, a engine brake setting switch for low, medium, and high, your Niederman, siren brake, and mirror heat. Let's move just downward from this location. This is your mirror control for the passenger and driver's side mirror. Also, the yellow diamond is your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. To the right, you'll find your Allison transmission pad with a digital indicator. Let's move up from this location where you'll find your climate control and defrost, also 12 volt access, and also a caution, disengage the retarder when on wet or slippery surfaces. Let's move overhead. I'd like to direct your attention to the yellow placard all the way to the far left in the image. This is your vehicle height, 10 feet, 5.5 inches, length, 31 feet, 2.5 inches, 42,000 gross vehicle weight rating. Let's take a look at the switches now, starting with the emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Just beneath that, you'll find your go light control module. There's an on and off switch with a light indicating it's on, and then the joystick will be just to the left. Let's move slightly to the right to the next switch panel where you'll find the Opticom, Opticom momentary switch, high beam flash, electronic siren, and air horn. When any of these switches have been activated, the green light within the switch will illuminate indicating that it is active and on. Moving further to the right, an additional switch panel for front scene, driver side scene, passenger side scene, deck light, cab pole lights, and rear cornering lights. Once again, when the switch has been activated, the green light within the switch will illuminate. Let's move just to the right of this location where you'll find your traffic advisor. And then moving further to the right in the same vicinity, you'll find your siren module. This is your PA and also electronic siren control. Directly in the center, you'll find this red light. If flashing, it's indicating do not move your apparatus. You may have a compartment door open or ajar. General view here of the center section of your apparatus. As we look directly behind the driver's seat, you'll find shoreline power outlet. Looking directly overhead, push on and off red or white lens lights, air conditioning, and your David Clark headset system. Moving to the rear cab, affixed to the door panel, you'll find all of our safety and warning information, electric windows, door latch, and lock. Moving overhead, you'll find additional storage locations above the two EMS compartments attached to the roof area. Moving downward from this location, you'll find a compartment light switch on the passenger and also on the driver's side that will illuminate the lights within those EMS compartments. In the very center, lift and turn latch will gain you access to the rear portion of the engine so you can do your daily checks for oil and transmission. 
As we look to the rear, you'll find a seat riser. Directly under the seat riser is a front facing door, which will gain access both side and also front section for storage location. As we move overhead, you'll find your David Clark intercom system directly over the two seat locations. Let's move outside to the exterior where you'll find on the rear wall an additional long compartment. Once again, D-handle gains you access. We're now to the pump panel. I'd like to direct your attention to the very bottom section below the cab area. There are two valves located here, your foam pump discharge drain and also foam pump intake drain. Let's move back up to the very top section to the cross leg where you'll find the number one, number two, and also the two and a half inch cross leg, which are all foam capable. In the very top section, you'll find your pump intake and also master discharge. These are the two large gauges in the upper portion or are your master gauges. To the right, your foam level tank A indicator. Let's move downward onto the pump panel itself. We'll start on the left side with a warning information regarding fall. If you choose to climb on the vehicle, always face the vehicle when climbing. And also a warning regarding entanglement hazard because of those lines coming from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement. This is your vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. They're currently plugged in for testing purposes. Just beneath that, you'll find your deluge discharge. It is a wheel valve. Moving to the right, you'll find your pressure throttle governor. Also with incorporated in this, you'll find a water tank level indicator. Moving just to the right, you'll find panel lights and also an indicator OK to pump that your pump has properly been engaged. You can go ahead and engage the pressure throttle governor. To the right, you'll find your Husky 3 foam system module. This is the red module. And then also in the upper right, you'll find all of our switches here and also horn and spare and reel rewind. As we move downward, you're going to find the reel discharge also foam capable. Moving just to the right of this location, difficult to see in this image, there is a speaker located here. It is the audible alarm associated with the pressure throttle governor. The outer edge of that buzzle does allow you to dampen the sound. Driver rear discharge and officer rear discharge. And then all the way to the right, you'll find your engine cooler. Uh, this is a twist, not a pull. Let's move downward on the pump panel and to the left or front section of the apparatus where you'll find your cross lay valves. They are all foam capable for cross lays one, two, and the two and a half. Just beneath that, you'll find the front discharge, driver one, two, driver three, and also officer four. Large diameter discharge in green. As we move to the right, you'll find your tank refill and recirculating line. Moving further to the right, you'll find your push to prime. This is an air primer. There is instructions just beneath this indicating at least 1000 RPMs for best practices Let's move now all the way downward and we'll find on the left, this is your manual pump shift. Moving just to the right, you have your two discharges on the driver's side. And then you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule, which we'll go over in just a few moments. Moving downward, we'll find your Husky 3 foam system specification and also operating instructions. Let's move down beneath the Husky foam system where you'll find a warning, do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. Also a warning regarding pressure hazard, caps may be under pressure. And then just to the right, you'll find your main pump inlet for the driver's side. Moving up to the right, you'll find your tank to pump. This is an air shift. And as we move further down, you'll find your pump drain. Also, I'd like to point out that there is a two and a half inch driver's side auxiliary inlet and also affixed to that panel, you'll find a warning label regarding only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and only after they received proper training. Let's move now to the left and downward. This is your foam draft and tank inlet. Moving further to the right, we have a Pandor. We'll talk about the contents behind this in just a few moments. But further to the right, you'll find your real discharge, air supply, and air outlet controls. And then further to the right, you'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's go ahead and move to the right on the uh, image here, where we'll find your watrous placard, indicating the type of pump that you have, which is a watrous. And then beneath that, you'll find the minimum operation maintenance schedule. Let's go ahead and take a look at the watrous placard first. You do have a CSU. It is a 2000 capacity GPM pump. As we move to the right, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. 
On the left is the associated GPM at test pressure, and on the right you'll find the associated RPM at test pressure with the five digit job number in the upper left hand corner and also a governed speed of 2400 RPMs. Let's move back to the pump panel to the lift and turn latch in the lower section. Behind this you'll find your pump operations for fill operations. It's a yellow handle, there are instructions on the back side of the door. Let's move now to the entire vehicle. All compartment doors are in the open position. We'll start first with the compartment just in front of the rear axle. The upper portion has our ventilation system, adjustable shelves, and also LED lighting and dry deck material. The very bottom section you'll find a pull-out tray. The release mechanism is on the lower right hand side. This compartment is also outfitted with an SCBA bottle on the vertical wall and at the very bottom now we have an image here with the shelf in the outward or open position. Let's move directly over the axle where you'll find a D handle will gain you access to the back side of this tool board. Let's also take a look at SCBA bottle storage, three in the front section, one toward the rear of the axle, and then also your fuel door for DEF and also ultra low so for diesel. Let's take a look now at the hinged area of the tool board. There is a release mechanism on the very back side of that. If you have it in the locked position, you will need to release the lock to restore. Three SCBA bottles with retaining straps just to the front of the axle. As we look to the rear, you'll find your SCBA storage, also your ultra low sulfur diesel. It is the silver cap. As we expose the ultra low sulfur diesel flap downward, it will expose your DEF cap, which is going to be blue in color, and this is a 4.5 US gallon tank. Let's move toward the rear compartment where you'll find an additional pull-out tray on the lower section. The release mechanism is on the lower right. This is it in its open position. It will lock into position, requiring you to push the release to restore it back to its original position. On the vertical wall, you will find a shore power inverter outlet. They are blue in color, indicating that also they are capable with the inverter. You'll also find a attachment point just to the rear of the axle. It is a 9,000 pound pull rating. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus. We'll first start in the left and right side lower section. We have a emergency warning light, brake, turn, and also reverse light. You'll also find a traffic advisor directly above the Pierce logo. You have emergency warning lights on each side in the upper portion, and then also rear scene lights or work lights in the upper portion of the apparatus. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups. First, starting with the deck lights. This is a cupped switch which you can turn or activate deck lights on. As we move more toward the center, you'll find two drop down or flip down steps for gaining access to go aloft. You'll also find two discharges, driver side and passenger side. They are both two and a half inch. One side does have a reducer to inch and a half. Your backup camera, which does have a protective cover. And then also you'll find some warning labels. In this area, pressure warning hazard, also, a, if you're climbing on the vehicle, face it and do not ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. And then at the very end, you'll find an entanglement hazard because of those lines coming from aloft in the rear area. You do have the possibility of entanglement. Once again, just above the Pierce logo is the traffic advisor. Let's take a look at some close-ups. First, starting with the warning labels, pressure hazard, always face the vehicle and fall and also entanglement hazard. In the very bottom section, you'll find a pull-out tray. At the very bottom right is the release mechanism for that. You'll also need to release the lock to restore it to its original position. Let's look into the hose bed. At the very top section of the hose bed cover, you'll find a lift and turn latch which will gain you access into your storage location for backboard storage. Let's go ahead and take a look with the cover on in the very back. I would like to now move down to the lower right corner in this image. You'll find a compartment which houses your powered equipment rack. There are instructions to raise and also to lower the powered equipment rack and also a danger regarding moving equipment. As we look to the right, there are two cup switches, one for the driver side and one for the passenger side hose bed lights. Let's go ahead and take a look at the full vehicle on the side with all of our compartment doors in the open position. Let's start now with the rear. We do have a pullout tray in the lower section LED lights and dry deck material, and also your ventilation system. This is showing the tray in the outboard position. Remember, you'll need to push the lock mechanism to restore. We do have an outlet here. It is shoreline and also inverter power. As we move to the rear axle area just behind, once again, a 9,000 maximum allowable winch rating. Let's go ahead and move now to the passenger side directly over the rear axle. You'll find SCBA bottle storage in front of and also in rear of the rear tire. 
three bottles with retaining straps to the rear, and three bottles to the front with retaining straps. As we move downward from this location, you'll find this placard warning you extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures exist, especially during region. Be cautious where you park your vehicle. As we move forward to this location, you'll find that the uppermost portion of this compartment is where your inverter is located. There is also a placard just beneath the inverter regarding instructions. Moving just to the right, you'll find your air compressor. This will operate when plugged into shore power. Moving forward to that location, you'll find the timer for your air recirculation system. Let's go ahead and move to the forward section of the pump panel. We'll start identifying a few items within this area. Let's first start at the upper portion with this warning label regarding entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement. We do have the crosslays located two and a half, number one, and number two crosslay. As we move downward, you'll find the number four officer side discharge. It's a two and a half. You'll also find a pan door for getting access behind the pump panel. This is for your uh, ladder rack and it is the hydraulic reservoir. You'll also find your internal pump relief valve. Moving now to the panel itself, this is your large diameter pump intake. And then just to the right, you'll find your large diameter discharge. Down in the lower section, you'll find your two and a half inch auxiliary inlet female ball valve. You'll also find all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains located across the very bottom section. Let's move just to the right of this location within the same vicinity of the pump panel where you'll find your cab lift. There are instructions for raise and lower. We also have some caution and danger information. Be sure all items are secured with inside the cab. As we look to the rear cab wall, you'll find your pull light on the passenger and driver side. As we move to the cab area, same configuration as we do on the driver's side with the long compartment on the rear cab wall. As we move inside to the compartment space, you'll find affixed to the door panel all of our safety and warning information. And as we move back into the cab, just a general view, we have two EMS compartments, one on each side, and then also two SCBA seats located on the rear wall. As we move inside again, you have additional compartments overhead. And then just beneath that, you'll find the switch location for the compartment light, and then also the compartment light with inside, adjustable shelving, LED lighting, and also dry deck material. As we move to the door panel, once again, affixed all of our safety and warning information at the driver's door. As we move to the A pillar, we're gonna find the fill location for your windshield wiper. Your vehicle also is equipped with a supplemental restraint system airbag. Please be cautious in mounting anything within this area. Let's move down to the floorboard in the officer side where you'll find a foot pedal which will control the air horn. As we move just to the left of this location, left shoulder area, you'll find your push to talk for the radio. You'll also find 12 volt power via USB and also barrel style. General view overhead in the officer position, push on and off red or white lens. You'll also find your seat belt information display, red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted, green indicating they are belted and in the seat. Moving to the right, you'll find your front scene, driver side scene, passenger side scene, cab pole lights, rear cornering lights, and also a siren break. Once again, when any of the switches have been activated, they will illuminate the color of the switch. Let's move now just to the right where you'll find your go light control module and also a high intensity map light. As we move directly behind the officer seat, you'll find shoreline power and inverter outlet. It is the blue color shield, and then also a battery direct fuse block. Let's take a look with the ladder in the down position, 24 foot roof, 14 foot roof, and also an attic ladder, which is 10 feet long handled tool storage just above those locations. As we move to the hose bed cover, you'll find these yellow diamonds indicating the edge of the walking surface for firefighter safety. You'll also find two accesses. One D-handle will gain access into the water and the other will gain access into the foam tank. General view with them in the upright position or open position. Let's go ahead and take a look on the outer edges. We do have additional storage on each side. There are two on the passenger side and two on the driver's side.
From this position, let's go ahead and look forward to the dunnage area. We'll identify a few items within this area, first starting with your master stream device and then also your booster line. As we look into the storage area into the dunnage, you'll find that top fill location for water and also the foam fill location for tank A. We do have a warning label here regarding do not mix different brands or consistencies for the possibility of foam failure. Let's go ahead and move to the dunnage area, identify a few items within this area. First, your booster line, for example, does have a manual rewind in case there is electrical failure. And then also you'll find a free spool or tension knob. Moving over toward the right in the image, you'll find your master stream device wheel valve for on and off. And then in the upper right corner, you'll find your Husky 3 reservoir and also a fill location for the hydraulic oil. As we look to the cab area, this is a non-walking surface and that's why we have these warning labels located on the cab area. Congratulations, South Sonomish County, Washington on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35041. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.